Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the Fender Precision Bass versus the Fender Jazz Bass. Now if you ask people what the main difference between these two is, the most common answer would probably be that the P-Bass has one split coil pickup, whereas on the Jazz you get two single coils. But for me, the sound isn't actually the biggest difference between these two. So the way this video is going to work is I'm going to count down five key differences and then save talking about the sound until the end. But as we go through, I'll edit in some clips of me playing so you can hear those differences for yourself. So here on the left, I've got my American Standard Precision Bass from 2009. It was originally Olympic white, now gone quite yellow. It's just a straight up P-Bass, passive electronics, older body, maple neck, rosewood fingerboard. Over on the right, again, 2009, American Standard Jazz Bass, older body, maple neck, rosewood fingerboard. Again, all passive, just a straight up jazz bass. To all intents and purposes, these basses are identical other than this one's a P and this one's a J. The bridge, the tuners, etc. are all exactly the same. This one currently has nylon tape wound strings on, that's why they're black. If you want to hear how they sound, then I'll put a link below to a video that I've made with those. So the number one biggest difference between these two basses for me is actually the neck shape or more specifically, the neck width. So with the Jazz Bass, they've pretty much always been 38 millimeters at the nut, which translates as pretty slim, basically. Whereas with the P-Bass, it's varied a bit more over time, but with a modern one like this, it'll be 41 millimeters at the nut. If you go for something more vintage feeling, it could be 44 millimeters plus. Now these small differences of, you know, three or five millimeters might not sound like a lot, but when you're playing, they really do make a huge difference. It means that when you play a jazz bass, it really encourages you to play those faster licks, whereas on a P bass, it kind of slows you down a bit and makes you play a different way. So if you're a guitar player and you're maybe trying bass for the first time, or you're a younger person with smaller hands, you'll probably find that the jazz bass might be more suitable for you. Of course though, there's loads of people that just love the fat feeling of that P bass neck in their hand. <laughs> The number two difference I want to talk about is the body shape. So on the P bass, it's quite a symmetrical design, quite straight along here, whereas on the Jazz, we've got an offset going on. So it sticks out a bit on the bottom here and then nips in along the top there. Now, which you like the look of most is just a matter of personal opinion. But one gripe I do have about owning a Jazz bass is trying to get it to sit straight on a stand. However you do it, it's always a bit to the side, a bit at an angle. Now one solution might be to get the Hercules stands, which grab the base at the headstock end, but even then, you'll keep looking at it and thinking, is it really straight? Difference number three on my list then is again related to the body shape, and that is the weight. So in very, very general terms, you'll find that the average jazz bass is slightly heavier than the average P bass. It's because it's got this extra bit of wood around here at the thickest part of the body. Now, I've weighed these two, and there's actually not a lot in it. The P bass was 3.8K, whereas the jazz bass was 3.9K on the scales. So it's not a lot of difference, but it does feel like more than that. And I wonder whether it's also to do with the balance and the shape of the bass, that when you hold them, something about the weight distribution really makes the jazz bass just feel that bit heavier. One other thing to note is if you're looking at like those old 70s Ash jazz basses, some of those can weigh an absolute ton. So that's one thing to be mindful of. 
Another quick point about weight is whilst you can get five string P basses, it's most common to see five strings on a jazz bass. And now that really can get quite heavy once you add on the extra weight of the wider neck and then batteries and things for active electronics. And that can add up to be quite a bulky instrument, particularly compared to more modern designs from like Ibanez or Warwick. The number four difference I want to talk about is buzz or electrical hum. So on a P bass, the split core pickups are wired in series. This creates a hum cancelling effect and eliminates most of the buzz. This makes it a really quiet bass to use and is one of the reasons P basses are so popular in studio situations. With a jazz bass, you do get hum cancelling when both pickups are on, but if you're only using one at a time, then you will get some hum. How much hum depends on your situation, but the usual culprits tend to be computer screens and lights on nearby, all of which you'll have when you're in a recording situation or on a gig. Whether that hum causes a problem, now on a gig, where there's a lot of loud guitars and things going on, you're probably not going to notice it. But where it can be a problem is in the recording studio, in those really quiet, delicate moments, and you just hear that buzzing coming through. The fifth thing I want to mention then, before I go on to talk about the sound, is the controls. So with the jazz bass, because we've got more pickups, we've got more controls. So we get a volume for each pickup, plus a tone control. Whereas on the P bass, it's just the one volume, one tone. Now you might be tempted to think with the jazz bass, more controls equals more sounds equals better. But that's not necessarily the case. There's something great about the simplicity of the P bass setup because you've got such limited options to adjust the tone with the controls, it means you really need to focus on playing and find those different tones by changing the way you attack the strings. The jazz bass lets you create a lot of different tones by finding different blends of the two pickups using the independent volume controls. But this can also be annoying at times. Firstly, you might find a real sweet spot in the blend and then never be able to find it again and never get the knobs back in that same position. Secondly, when you're on a gig and you just want to turn the bass down, it's annoying having to have two controls. And if you just want to bring it down for a quiet bit in a song, well, what are you going to do? Turn both of them a little bit? It's not always that easy to manage. So now onto the sound comparison. And what I'm going to do is just piece together some clips from my previous YouTube videos. Now, obviously, the jazz bass has more settings on it than a P bass. So for each style, I'll just insert the clip with what I think are the best settings for the jazz bass for that particular style. So here we go. <laughs> I'll leave you to make your own mind up about which you thought sounded the best for each style, but for now, let me close out the video just by giving my thoughts on these two basses overall. 
So if I could only have one bass, I must say it would have to be the jazz bass. And really, that's because of the slimmer neck. Even with my big hands, I just find it more comfortable. That's not to say though, there are times when I prefer the P bass, particularly if I'm playing with a pick. In terms of tones, I really like the back pickup on the jazz bass, and using the neck pickup, I feel when I'm recording, I can get pretty close to that P bass tone. However, when playing live with a band, with a P bass, you really feel the power of that split core pickup, and that's for me when it comes into its own. Anyway, that's the video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again soon.